this last this last unit you know, was really special to me because I felt like I was equipping my kids more than usual with the ability to be creative and to hear the world around them in a different way. I want them to know that music can happen all around them with anything. When I was younger, I had a really great fascination with sounds and I really understood that sounds had, they had depth and they had color and they had texture and that they could be manipulated and I loved like rubbing things together and hitting things and knocking on things and I remember playing with a car, I would be a lot more fascinated with the sound of the plastic wheels on the table. You know, I'd be really fascinated with that more than I would with the car. I would really be interested in, in what something sounded like when I would hit it with a stick or I would hit it with my hand. I'm just trying to instill a curiosity with sound and the way that I knew that these projects were finally taking hold with kids is that I had students coming up to me and they were like, oh Mr. Versalino, listen to this. And you know, and they would take like a zipper and be like, one of the kids had a sticker on a hat, I peeled the sticker off the hat. And it was just so like, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, that's awesome, like transitional sound. You know, I love to see students get curious about sound and not just not just hear the sound of a can opening, not just hear the crunch of a chip, but to hear something musical. This is real. <laughs> you know, kids that are able to sustain this type of creativity and this type of curiosity with sound, there are so many jobs they could take that love for sound and creating and, and recording and manipulating sound. They could make that into an actual career. And I think that that's really important for me as a music teacher to be able to help breathe on that curiosity. For the last part of the project, um, I thought it would be cool to involve a little bit of Detroit history. I don't know if you know this, but Fago Pop is actually made right here in Detroit. So I was like, what if we, what if we made a piece of music that was centered around not just something that was made in Detroit, but the sound of it, you know? So we're gonna like crack open those cans, we're gonna record it and see what it sounds like, and we're gonna, we're gonna slurp on it a little bit, we're gonna clink the glasses together, we're gonna slide it across the table, and it was really fun. I added a little keyboard in there, and our awesome music teacher uh, in high school came and played saxophone, and we were able to create a really neat piece of music that was not just celebrating something that was, that's made uh, in our city that's historical, but also a piece of music that that's kind of a culmination of the exploration that we've been doing in class when it comes to sound and exploring that and, and finding ways to be creative with things that are around us that we don't look at and say, wow, that could be part of a piece of music. I want you, you're spraying it up in the air, I want you to spray it. I want you to spray it that way. The best one you've ever done in your entire life. Ready? Go. Hold it up. <laughs> this time when you rip it, I want you to make a Hulk sound like. Do it again. One, two, ready, and. Do it again. One, two, ready, and. Ready. I'm not ready because it's not totally quiet. And go. How you like that? How you like that? How you like that? How you like that? Wait, 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 wait. Ready. Ready, go. Hey, we're talking to music class how <laughs> much make music with any type of object. How about that? No, no, it's gotta be quicker. Right. Come on. Yeah.